Science in Small Amounts, Episode 2, Gravitational Potential Energy. This tennis ball has been thrown in an upwards direction, as now temporarily airborne, but soon will be brought back down to the ground by one of the four fundamental forces of nature, and the one, arguably, that's the most well known, but it's actually the weakest, gravity. When the ball is thrown upwards, it's said to experience an increase in gravitational potential energy. This is the stored energy an object has in relation to its positioning in a gravitational field, i.e. its positioning above the surface of the Earth. So, when I threw this tennis ball into the air, its position in a gravitational field changed as a result of a force being exerted onto the ball which allowed it to go against the force of gravity. This is an example of what is known as work, which describes how the application of a force onto an object leads to the object moving in the direction of the force over a distance. As a result, the tennis ball's gravitational potential energy increases. However, when it's brought back down to the ground, its gravitational potential energy decreases. When the ball falls back down, it's because it has another type of energy, kinetic energy. When the ball is thrown into the air, an energy transfer takes place, in which chemical energy in my muscles is converted into kinetic energy, and then transferred mainly into stored gravitational potential energy in the tennis ball. Some of the kinetic energy is converted into thermal energy, heat, but this will dissipate into the environment, and is considered wasted energy. When a tennis ball descends, another example of energy transfer takes place, during which the ball's gravitational potential energy is converted mainly into kinetic energy. All the aforementioned examples of energy transfer correspond with the law or principle of conservation of energy, which states that energy is neither created nor destroyed, but instead there is a conversion from one type of energy to another, or a transference of energy from one object to another. In this example, gravitational potential energy is being converted mainly into kinetic energy as the ball falls back down towards the ground. Some of the stored gravitational potential energy is converted into thermal energy, heat, but this will dissipate into the environment and is considered wasted energy. We'll talk about kinetic energy in more detail in another video. When we are considering the gravitational potential energy of an object, it usually concerns an object close to the Earth's surface. When an object is falling, we can assume, if air resistance is negligible, that it is accelerating at a constant velocity of 9.81 meters per second squared downwards. So how can we calculate the gravitational potential energy of an object? We need to use the following equation, which states that to calculate the GPE of an object, we must multiply its mass, which is given in kilograms, by the value given to acceleration due to gravity, which is in meters per second squared, and then multiply by the height of the object's position in relation to the ground, which is given in meters. So let's calculate the GPE of this tennis ball at its highest position. We're going to assume a constant value for acceleration due to gravity, so therefore we need to find out two things, the mass of the tennis ball and the height of the ball's position in relation to the ground. So, this tennis ball is thrown 3 metres above ground level at its highest position, and has a mass of 0.059 kilograms. We are going to assume that acceleration due to gravity when air resistance is negligible has a value of 9.81 metres per second squared. So the ball's GPE can be calculated by multiplying 0.059 kilograms by 9.81 metres per second squared, and then multiplied by 3 metres, and we are going to give our answer to this question as a whole number, with a correct unit which is joules, so our answer to this question is 17 joules. We can write the answer to this question as a whole number. However, if an answer to a question is quite large or small, it would be advisable to write it in standard form, also known as scientific notation. OK, so now we know how to work out how much gravitational potential energy is stored in an object at a given position, let's now work out the change in gravitational potential energy stored in an object when its positioning changes in relation to its height above the ground. We need to use the following equation, which states that to calculate the change in GPE, which is given in joules, of an object, we must multiply its mass, which is given in kilograms, by the value given to acceleration due to gravity, which is given as meters per second squared, and then multiply by the change in height of the object's position in relation to the ground, which is given in meters. So this tennis ball has a mass of 0.059 kilograms and is thrown from 0.90 meters above ground level to 3 meters from the ground at its highest point. Therefore, the change in height is 2.10 meters. We are once again going to assume that acceleration due to gravity when air resistance is negligible has a value of 9.81 meters per second squared. So the ball's change in GPE can be calculated by multiplying 0.059 kilograms by 9.81 meters per second squared and then multiply by 2.10 meters. And we're going to give our answer to two significant figures because that is the number of significant figures present in the value in the calculation with the fewest significant figures. So our answer is 12 joules.
That brings us to the end of this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Please also check out my blog for other science tutorials and my other social media pages, links to which I'll leave down below. My name is Joe from Something With Joe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.